Yo people, welcome to another tutorial. My name's Alex and this is how to add some epic cinematic black bars to your game. You know it's just about to go down when the black bars are rolling. So yeah, let's get into it. So as the cinematic bars are UI elements, you will be able to use this in both 2D and 3D games. So the first thing when working with UI, you're actually gonna need a canvas. So what you wanna do is just right click, come down to UI and you can select canvas. And then we've got our canvas for all the elements to be rendered on. We name that UI canvas. As the render mode is set to screen space overlay, what we're gonna actually do is just make sure that the canvas scaler is set to scale with screen size and the reference resolution that we're going to be using is whatever resolution you're actually building the game at. So if you're going with the Unity standalone, it'll be 1024 by 768. If you're going with the WebGL standalone, it's 960 by 600. So now that the canvas has been set up, what we're going to do is just right click, uh, come down, and we're going to create an image. All we're going to do is just change the color, just change that to black, and we'll use this as the black bars. So we'll call that, you know, top bar. So what we actually want to do is set the width of the bar to match the screen size. So that would be 960 in my case. You would set it to whatever resolution you were building your game with and for the height we'll just say 120 we'll make it a little bit thick it's how we like them so now we'll just duplicate the top bar call that bottom bar we will now position them something like 240 looks good and then we'll say minus 240 that looks good for me obviously you can make them thicker or slimmer depending on what look you're going for then what we'll actually do is come to the UI canvas and we'll just hit create empty just create an empty object just to use as a container for the bars so we'll call that cinematic black bars container. So as we're going to animate the black bars, we're going to need to add an animation controller. So with the cinematic black bars container selected, we just come over to add component and we're just going to find the animator. I'm going to add the animator and in order for this animator to actually play animations, we're going to need a controller. I'm just going to right click, create a new folder, just call that cinematic bars animation. And then within the folder, I'm going to hit create and then we're going to come down to animator controller. So we'll call that cinematic bars controller. And then we'll drag and drop that to the controller field in the animator. And now we can work on the animation. So what we'll do is just come over to the animation panel. And if you don't have that, it will just be under window animation. With the cinematic black bars selected, just hit create. I'm going to call the first one show bars. And then we're going to create a new clip and just call that hide bars. Now we need to work on the show bar animation, but what I would do is just come over to the game view with the top bar selected, just see whereabouts it needs to be to be off screen. So 360 looks good for me. So what we'll do is just click undo that, come back to the cinematic black bars container with show bar selected. We're gonna go to record and we're gonna select the top bar and then we're gonna put that to 360. And then with the bottom bar, we're gonna put the position to minus 360. Just because we tested that earlier, we know that that is completely off screen. Screen. half a second later along the timeline we will just move them back to where they previously were which is minus 240 and for the top bar positive 240 so that will be the animation to show the bars and now what we'll do is we'll come over to hide bars and make sure you hit record so with the top bar we actually want it to stay where it is so we'll just make a keyframe there and for the bottom bar we'll make a keyframe as well half a second later we'll take them off screen so it'll be minus 360 for the bottom bar and positive 360 for the top bar so we've got our animations so if we hit play we'll see it should see the show bar but obviously it's looping which we don't want just come over to hide bars disable the loop time and show bars and disable the loop time now we actually need to set up the animator for the black bars so what we'll do is just come over to the animator if you don't have this panel open you can just come over to window animator so the entry animation will be show bars so if the game object is enabled show bars will be the first animation that plays but in order to play the hide bars animation there will need to be a transition from show bars to hide bars so what we'll do is just right click hit make transition and then just select hide bars. So what we'll do is we'll create a parameter, uh, create a trigger and just call that hide bars. And then in the transition, when you left click on the transition, what we'll do is disable the exit time so that it plays straight away and doesn't wait for this animation to finish. In the conditions panel, we'll just add a condition and that will be hide bars. Now that we've got the bars set up, we can actually create the script that will control the bars. What we'll do is just create a C sharp script and just call that cinematic bars controller. And I'm just gonna open that up. Now this script shouldn't actually be too complicated as all we need it to do is just show the bars, hide the bars and disable the game object when they're no longer in view so we'll start off by actually just getting rid of the start and update so the first thing we need is a reference to the cinematic bar container game object so what we do is we'll use a serialized field attribute and create a private game object 
and call that cinematic bar container and then we put geo just so we know it's the game object and we'll need to create a reference for the animator so what we'll do is just create another serialized field private animator and we'll call that cinematic bars animator so as i would like to be able to call some of these methods from outside of the class so what we'll do is actually create some public methods so I'll start off with public void show bars and then we'll also need one so we'll say public void hide bars cool so those will be the two main functions and for show bars all we need to do is just enable the cinematic bar container game object and then the show bar animation will play so what we need to say is cinematic bar container game object dot set active true and that's literally all there is for show bars and then for hide bars what we need to do is actually access the animator so what would happen is cinematic bars animator dot set trigger and then we'll pass in the trigger that we created which was hide bars cool the thing is if we did this all it would do is just move them off screen but they would still remain within the scene so what we'll actually do is we'll actually have to create a co-routine to allow the animation to play there to be a slight delay as the animation plays and then for it to disable the game object so what we'll do is create a private i enumerator just call that hide bars and disable game object and the reason it's giving us this red line is that every coroutine needs a yield statement so we'll just say yield return new so what we'll use is a new wait for seconds and the seconds that we want to wait for is the length of the animation and as I know that is half a second I'll just use 0.5 F so what we want to do is actually just move this set trigger line over to the hide bars and disable game object coroutine we just then want to say cinematic bars container game object dot set active false and what we'll do is just call this coroutine from hide bars so we'll say start coroutine hide bars and disable game object and we actually want to call this coroutine if the bar is actually in the scene so just to make sure we'll say if cinematic bar container dot active self so if it's actually active in the hierarchy or it's actually active in the scene then we'll call this start coroutine cool and that's pretty much as complex as this script needs to be. Now, as I would like to be able to call this script from outside of the class, what I'm actually going to do is create a public static reference to itself. And we could do this because there's actually only one instance of the script in the scene at once. What we're going to do is just create a public static or cinematic bars controller. And we'll call that instance. And what we can do is just define how it can be accessed. So we'll give it a public get attribute, but a private set attribute. And then that way, this can prevent this instance being set from outside of the script. And then what we'll need to do is use the await function. So what we'll say is private void await. What we'll do is we'll use the singleton pattern just to make sure that there's only one instance of this within the scene. So what we'll do say is if instance is equal to null, then instance equals this else if instance does not equal this then we will destroy the game object and that is just to make sure that there is only one instance of this class at any time all right sweet okay and that is pretty much the script actually complete so the last thing we'll do is just get rid of this using statement as we're not using it now i'll show you just uh, how to actually get this working and we'll just create an empty game object to put the cinematic bar controller script on and the reason we don't put the controller onto the container object is that this object will be enabled and disabled so if it's disabled we won't actually be able to use the script so just call this game object cinematic bar controller and then for the cinematic bar container field just to put in the cinematic bar container and for the animator just drop in the cinematic bar container as well and now the cinematic bar controller is actually ready to use so what i'm going to do now is just create a script just to show you how to use the cinematic bars so i'm going to call this bars test and obviously you would just use these lines of code that I'm going to write in here and just call them from wherever you would like them. So maybe for a cutscene or for dialogue or whatever, or for a boss fight or whatever. So I'm just going to bind these to keys. So here we will show bars and here we will hide bars. So wherever we would like to show the bars, thanks to the fact that we have used this public static instance, we can just say cinematic bars controller dot instance dot show bars and voila. That's all the code that we need to show the bars and then to hide the bars, we would just say cinematic bars controller dot instance dot hide bars. Awesome. So I'm just going to create a test object so that I can attach the script to it. And then when we press play, see that if I press K, the show bars animations play. If I press L, 
we come out of it. So that is pretty much it. So my last suggestion would just be that before you put a call into the show bars or hide bars, you just do a null check and you would just do that by saying if cinematic bars controller dot instance and then say does not equal null, then you want to do the show bars and then we can do the same for the hide bars. And that's just to prevent any errors from occurring. Pros and cons to that, because at least if there's an error, it can show you that you're missing something. And if there's no error, you might just miss it. So use your null checks wisely, but that is pretty much it. Uh, if you would like to see how I implement it into the dialogue system, I'll be continuing the tutorial, but otherwise, thanks for watching. Now, as I want to make some epic dialogue, I will just show you how we would go about doing that. So what we'd actually do is just come over to the dialogue manager. And this is a script that I made in a previous tutorial video. So I'll leave a link for that in the description. So you can use this anywhere. As I'm doing, you can use it to add to your dialogue to make some really epic dialogue. So the first thing we're going to do is just go serialize field private ball is epic dialogue so if we check that then the cinematic dialogue will play if not it'll just be normal dialogue so what we'll actually need to do is change the trigger start dialogue method ever so slightly so that if it's epic dialogue we need to show the bars wait for them to fully display themselves and then start the dialogue so in order to do that we'll actually have to create a coroutine so what we'll do is just say private i enumerator we'll call that one start epic dialogue and once again it's going to need a yield statement and as i know the animation is going to be playing for half a second we'll just say yield return new wait for seconds of 0.5 f so once we wait we would then want to put in a call to start coroutine start dialogue so here is actually where we need to put in a call to show bars we can actually just type in cinematic bars controller dot instance dot show bars if there for some reason this instance has not been set it will cause an error so what we'll actually do is we'll say if the cinematic bars controller dot instance does not equal null then we'll put in that call we also only want to wait if it's not null so what we'll do is we'll actually just wrap that within that if statement and that is pretty much the start epic dialogue function so what we need to do is just say in our trigger start dialogue we'll say if is epic dialogue we will start coroutine start epic dialogue else we will just start the dialogue straight away so that's what we need to do to change the trigger start dialogue and then what we'll also need to do is just come down to where the end of the dialogue is so what we'll just say is again is say if cinematic bars controller dot instance does not equal null then we'll say cinematic that bars controller dot instance dot hide bars awesome we'll just put that before we toggle the player interaction and then what we'll actually do is just copy that and place that here as well so in both cases of the npc or the player finishing last it will call hide bars so now if we press play we'll see that we can walk up to the npc and it obviously didn't work and the reason for that is that in the dialogue manager i did not set it to be epic boy now we walk up boom epic dialogue come on as you can see then we get to the end of this we come back out of it okay and that all works thanks for watching the tutorial i hope you found it useful and i'll see you in the next one